Hello friends, welcome back to Dr. Jaggi's Academy. In today's lecture, I am going to discuss about the one of the important disorder of GIT that is peptic ulceration. So that I have divided into two uh, videos. This is the first part of the video that is peptic ulcer 1. So if you discuss about the different layers of GIT, okay, so we can see there are four layers of GIT. This is the lumen, okay, then the first layer is called as the mucosa which is very adjacent to the lumen then we are having the submucosa then we are having the muscularis layer muscularis externa and this muscularis layer is mainly made up of the smooth muscles which is responsible for the contraction and relaxation of the GIT and the outermost layer is, is either called as serosa or it is called as adventitia Adventitia is, it is, this word is used if we are having the esophagus or the duodenum, but for other parts of the GIT, we use the word serosa. So these are the four layers of GIT. Now, if we use our word this peptic ulcer, so now peptic ulcer means, so there are two terms actually, I just want to differentiate. One word is called as erosion. Erosion means, the, if this mucosa, this mucosal layer is ruptured, uppermost mucosa is ruptured then we use the word erosion but if this this uh, this kind of a damage in the GIT is through the mucosa to the submucosa sometimes it can go into the muscularis layer this kind of a damage some this erosion then that is called as the peptic ulcer so how we can define peptic ulcer peptic ulcer is called as as breach in the mucosa okay breach means something has damaged in the mucosa in the GIT which extends deep into the submucosa layer which goes deep or sometime into the muscularis layer so this is the peptic ulcers so now what kind of peptic ulcers can be there so now peptic ulcers can be in the this stomach region they can be single or they can be multiple mostly they can be single so then if these ulcers take place in the stomach we call gastric ulcers but these ulcers can also take place in this portion that is the first part of small intestine that is duodenum and these kind of ulcers are called as duodenal ulcers so we are having either the gastric ulcers or we are having the duodenal ulcers so now i just found first i want to discuss the normal physiology in this stomach so if i discuss the structure of this stomach so you know uh, there is an important role of HCL for the digestion of the proteins. So we are having uh, acidic pH in our stomach. So you know if this HCL is there, acid is there, it can damage the stomach. So it can produce the damage to the stomach. But it doesn't happen. Why it, is, it, it doesn't happen in the normal condition? Because we are having the protective layer, this whole stomach is covered with this protective layer and this protective layer is basically a mucus so that means if this acid acts on this mucosa there is no damage so this is what i want to discuss in the normal condition acid is there but it is being protected by the mucus layer but then why this peptic ulcer can take place what is the reason there is an imbalance between the aggressive forces that means aggressive forces they are increased and aggressive forces are increased like acid or pepsin this is the protolytic enzyme this is increased or there is a decrease in the defensive forces protective forces like this is a decrease in the mucus this is a decrease in the bicarbonate bicarbonate is also present uh, in, on the layers of GIT which neutralizes the acid so that means decrease in these protective forces and increase in these aggressive forces so now I just want to differentiate two, two type of ulcers duodenal ulcer and gastric ulcer one by one now first depending upon the location duodenal ulcers are located in the duodenum which is the upper part of the small intestine gastric ulcers are located in the stomach now the major reason for the duodenal ulcer is the increase in the aggressive forces now in the gastric ulcers 
decrease in the defensive system is the mainly responsible for the production of ulcers. Okay. Third difference. So increase in aggressive forces mean increase in SCL is important. In this condition, decrease in defensive, but SCL is relatively normal. Pain is relieved by food intake. That means if I am having a pain, I take a food and I get relieved. You understand that I am suffering from the duodenal ulcer. But if you take the food and immediately you get start having the pain, you should understand that there is a case of a gastric ulcer. Mostly in this kind of the person duodenal ulcer, most of the time these person say I am having the pain in the night, nocturnal, not in all, but 60 to 80 percent of cases the pain is occurs in the night. In this condition, rarely, very few cases, pain is in the night. So these are some differences between the gastric ulcers and the duodenal ulcers. So now what are the clinical symptoms? What the patient will say to you that I am suffering, I am having these kind of pains. So mainly, but most of the time, persons are not having any symptoms. They are asymptomatic. But if there is a pain, so you will say there is a pain in the upper part of the abdomen, upper abdominal pain, or sometimes they will use the word discomfort. And they say there is a burning. Pain is of different type. This is a burning type of the pain. And uh, as I told, if there is a duodenal ulcer, pain will take place after one to three hours of the food and mainly in the night. But in the gastric ulcer, pain occurs immediately after the food, immediately after taking the meal. So these are the clinical symptoms. So now what are the complications? That means if the ulcers are not treated, what can be the further complications? Bleeding. Because ulcers are there, they are going to bleed. Blood will come, but where blood will go? Blood, blood will go into the stools. In the end, uh, uh, blood is red in color, but by the time it goes into the stool, it becomes black in color. So you are having the black stools, which is called as melena. Sometimes either the blood can go in the downward direction in the form of stool, or there can be a vomiting also. The blood can come in the vomiting. Okay, then obviously blood is removed for the body in the body for a long period of time. Then there is a weakness in the body. Second thing, the ulcers may grow and ultimately they will form a hole in the stomach okay so perforation and when then what will happen the content of stomach can go into the abdominal cavity leads to leakage of stomach content into the abdominal cavity peritoneal cavity and that may lead to the peritonitis infection of the abdominal cavity acute peritonitis is the uh, thing that can happen if in, 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 as a complication of the gastric ulcers now what is the etiology what is the reason why these peptic ulcers take place so exact etiology is not known but there are many factors which are involved like there are some drugs cigarette smoke alcohol diet stress and infection infection is very important so now i will discuss these things one by one first of all drug induced ulcers now, uh, you know, uh, there is always uh, plasma membrane is present everywhere and on all the kind of cells. There is an enzyme phospholipase A2 which acts on the plasma membrane to release arachidonic acid. This arachidonic acid is acted upon by the enzyme cyclooxygenase to release prostaglandins. You have to remember that these prostaglandins in the GIT, they are gastroprotective. They protect the GIT. How they protect? by increasing the mucus, by increasing the bicarbonate and decreasing the acid. So they increase the protective forces and decrease the aggressive forces. So now what will happen if you give some drug like Nased, Nased example means aspirin, which is normally given for the headache or the, some kind of the pains, fever, these kind of things. So this Nased is going to inhibit cyclooxygenase. If this enzyme is inhibited, then prostaglandin will not be formed. Similarly, corticosteroids, they are also commonly used, they inhibit phospholipase A2. So because of, the because of these drugs, ultimately prostaglandin is not formed and then gastroprotection is not there. So that means nasades, corticosteroids, if given for a long period of time, they can produce the ulcers. Peptic ulceration. So as I told, nasades and glucocorticoids, they are mainly anti-inflammatory drugs. They reduce the production of prostaglandin 
and prostaglandin protect the body. So increasing the production of mucus and bicarbonate and decreasing the acid. That I told with the help of a diagram. Now cigarette smoke. So there is a strong correlation between the cigarette smoking and the ulcer development. Cigarette smoking, they increases the gastric emptying time, increases the acid secretion and decreases the bicarbonate. So you can see increasing the aggressive forces, decreasing the defensive forces. Alcohol. Alcohol can produce gastric lesions and the bleeding, but uh, there, there is not a sufficient evidence that shows that alcohol can produce the ulcer. Although alcohol should not be used, but there is not a very much linkage, but it can exaggerate the ulcers. Similarly, the diet like spices, coffee, beverages, they increase the acid secretion and they can cause dyspepsia or the indigestion, but the exact role is not known. But the, these items should be avoided in the gastric ulceration patients. So another important thing, stress. Psychological stress is very important factor in the development of ulcers. Now infections, helicobacter pylori, H. pylori is very important in inducing peptic ulceration. So I will discuss about H. pylori in the subsequent video. And so antibiotics are given to eradicate the infection and treat the ulcers. So in the upcoming video, I will continue with the peptic ulceration. I will discuss the pathogenesis. I will discuss three, three theories, gastric link theory, impaired defense theory, and the H. pylori link theory. Thank you.